focus on fostering an entrepreneurial mindset. We recognize the significance of cultivating digital business knowledge. Our goal is to empower students to think strategically, plan effectively, and anticipate changes. Understanding the important role of increasing brand awareness through social media. We aim IPMI students with insights and skills to create innovative sol solutions, preparing them for the digital trends that shape the future of customer experience. I hope you will find the program to be fruitful and engaging. Ladies and gentlemen, to start our first agenda, we are pleased to welcome Professor Amanwira Kartakusuma to deliver his opening remarks to officially open the Power Talk. Professor Aman is director of IPMI International Business School, and he is very supportive for this program. Prof. Aman, the time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, our uh, Miss of Ceremony. Uh, could you hear my voice? Okay, so first I would like to greet uh, Mr. Sultan Isnan Shah, the VP of uh, Head of Business Support and Digital of Indosat, our faculty members, ladies and gentlemen, and dear participants, uh, also IPMI students uh, who are attending this uh, Power Talk offline and online. Good afternoon, everyone. So I would like to extend my warm welcome to each one of you to this Power Talk event that holds great significance in our collective pursuit of knowledge and innovation. Our theme today is digital customer experience, innovation and trends. It's not only relevant to the dynamic business landscape, but also serves as the source of inspiration for our undergraduate and graduate students pursuing BBA and MBA degrees. The central aims of this event is to ignite inspiration and motivation among BBA and MBA students, the faculty members and stakeholders, both within and in the vicinity of our university. And our intention is to actively involve the broader society surrounding our academic institution. In doing so, we aspire to illuminate the continuously evolving business environment, especially considering the strides many in the digital era. Let me distill our multifaceted goals in the following three key pillars. Pillar number one, is empowering digital customer experiences, which elevate customer satisfaction through seamless, personalized digital experiences, emphasizing the importance of staying attuned to changing customer expectation, and inspire BBA and MBA students to understand and embrace the transformative power of digital interaction in shaping the future business landscape. Pillar number two, cultivating loyalty and competitive excellence that foster customer loyalty by providing positive digital experiences, driving repeat business and broad advocacy, and illuminate the role of digital innovation in creating a competitive edge, showcasing how businesses can distinguish themselves in a crowded marketplace. And pillar number three, operational excellence and innovation mindset that drive operational efficiency through digital innovation in customer facing processes and cultivate an innovation culture within our academic community, encouraging BBA and MBA students to actively contribute to the evolution of customer interaction and business strategies. As we embark on this journey of exploration into digital customer experience, innovation and trends, 
let us not only enrich our academic understanding, but also empower ourselves to become leaders in the evolving business, business landscape. I am confident that today's discussion will serve as a source of inspiration and empowerment for our students, faculties, and all stakeholders present. In closing, may I thank, may I thank you, Mr. Sultan Isnain Shah, the Vice President, Head of Business Support and Digital of Indosan, which is our, uh, our keynote speaker this afternoon. And finally, may this Power Talk event foster uh, a spirit of curiosity, collaboration, and innovation. So with that, I declare the webin uh, the power talk is officially open. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Professor Aman, for your opening speech. Ladies and gentlemen, before coming to our main agenda, I would like to introduce you to our speaker, Bapak Sultan Isnaja, and our moderator, Kak Putri. Bapak Sultan Isnaisha, the VP Digital CX of Indosat Uredo. He is an expert in managing marketing, operations, and customer relationships at regional and corporate level. He is a digital transformation professional with 10 years of board experience within various clients and media industries. And our moderator, Kaputri, is a knowledge associate in the case center department of IPMI International Business School. She is responsible for the administrative task of IPMI case center, from supporting the production of contents to organizing events. She ensures that the department is running well. Now, without further ado, I will now pass the floor to our moderator. Thank you, Mbak Suci. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ibu International Business School Power Talk session today, Tuesday, 23 January 2024. Um, my name is Putri, and I will be your moderator for today. And once again, we would like to thank you for participating in the Power Talk. We hope you have an insightful and fruitful discussion ahead. Okay, so our spotlight for today is on digital customer experience or DCX uh, in innovation and trends. And we're looking at strategies to boost customer satisfaction, loyalty, and business success through digital means. And from improving customer satisfaction with smooth digital experiences to creating an innovating, uh, sorry, innovative culture. And we will look into how businesses can do well in a constantly changing world as the people, uh, the customers' preferences are, are also constantly changing, right? And, uh, and how the technology is also changing um, by how we connect the world. So, uh, and by the end of this session, we hope for you to understand the important parts of digital customer experience. Okay, and today we are honored to have Sultan Isnainsha as an expert here to share their knowledge, experiences, and visions for the future of the business in the digital age. Okay, so without further ado, let's welcome Bapak Sultan Isnainsha. Good afternoon, Basil then. Good afternoon. Okay, so uh, before we start, may I briefly introduce you again to everyone here? So, Bapak Sultan Istan Shah, uh, his journey began in 2009 to 2010 when social media was starting to boom. So, he was a markham for International Design School, and he joined Zalora Indonesia in 2014. He lead the development of 
comprehensive strategic marketing plan for digital channels on web commerce, social media, and chat apps. And also in 2017, Indosat Uridu entrusted him with the role of digital CRM manager, where he transformed traditional customer service processes into a digital-friendly contact center. And his expertise extends to managing marketing, operations, and customer relationships at both regional and corporate levels. Okay. Oh, and once again, I would like to remind the online participants, if you have questions, please put your questions in the chat box, and then we will discuss during the Q&A session. Okay, maybe, Pak Sultan, you may start your presentation. Okay, thank you. Good, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon. Okay, so uh, do we have uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the flicker? Right, so while waiting on the deck to be shown here, I would like to ask all of us here, how are you today? Yeah. All good? Yeah. Really good, yeah, right. So I would like to ask who here in the offline audiences that comes here, uh, that comes from outer, outer building or outer area of this campus? Okay, one person. So what's your name again? My name is Abdullah Emir Pamudia. You can call, but you can call me Abdul. Okay, Mas Abdul, I would like to ask you, how do you get here? You use cars, so you have uh, your private uh, transportations, right? So, in terms of transportations or commuting to one place or to another, when you don't have access to car, what are you gonna do usually? Uh, alternatively, I can order go uh, go car, for example, or maybe on another online transportation service. Or maybe I can go grab a taxi nearby. I think there's a lot of options here okay. in Jakarta. Cool. So we have uh, integrated public transportation yes, now, then, that's right? right? That's right. Right. Thank you, Abdul. You're welcome. So why I'm asking that kind of questions because it relates to how do we behave and how do we react to the kind of environments that we are currently uh, integrating to our life nowadays. So can we start? So the reason why I'm asking these questions is that I realize that the more we have interacting with every touch point of our life, whether we are waking up from our sleeps and then going back to our sleeps, we are interacting to a more kind of lifestyle touch points, right? Previously, before there is digital media, when we wake up in the morning, what are we looking to? We are looking for informations right we are looking for newspapers people are commonly sitting down into a park reading a book or a newspapers right but when the millennium scams when the digital and electronic becomes more advanced our behavior shifted right today when we are waking up from our sleeps what do we do we opening our smartphones right and when we are going to bed we also going to close our smartphones. So there is no single time in our life today that we are being detached from the electronic devices, right? So this is the topic that we're going to discuss today. Is it good? Okay. 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 So almost every behavior that we have today is by design. So I would like you to really, really understand these sentences that almost every behavior that we have today is by design. And it is designed by the companies or by brands, right? So maybe you feel this, oh, this is shocking. My behavior, my lifestyle activity is by design. It is designed by companies and by brands. How does it that K 
came to be like that, right? So today, let's realize, we prefer to do more tapping over than scrolling. Why? Because tapping is easy, right? We just tap. Scrolling, there is a movement from your thumbnail from bottom to the up. So it's more effort to you, right? So it's more complex. But tapping is easy. That's why when you open your social media, the first thing that, you to, that you're going to do after you favoriting some contents, what do you do? Liking a post, right? And then there is the behavior of the digital media. It is more intuitive, so it's more easy for us to touch than to type. So I still remember during the smartphone, it's not really smart. We call it dumb phone, the era of Blackberry, yeah. right? And back then, the era of Nokia, right? Because I'm a millennial, so I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing the phase of the changing, the fast changings of the smartphones from the handphone batang to yeah. QWERTY and then to Nokia and then to smartphones, right? I remember that during my high school, I can type without even looking. I just do this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I clearly remember I have like a muscle memory from my hands to the QWERTY keyboards that, that we have on the phones. Before that, it's just a normal keyboard. It, it's not even QWERTY. And then BlackBerry comes out and then it goes to a QWERTY and then it put the screen bigger. And then Apple comes out with a touch screen. And then Android comes out and then we all forget how to do that, right? So today, we also more care about notifications over noticing something or understanding something. Why? I will tell you the reason why later on. But this is the behavior that we have right now. And we are now also more care for cashless experience over cash experience. If you guys still remember, before COVID, before 2019, I had this kind of experience when I go to the offline store, when I go to the OMKM or SME store, I will stand up and I will have a queuing line. You know why? Because at that time, Gojek just launched GoPay, right? The merchants is already have the GoPay, but the customers, the users, they didn't know anything about that at all. So when I go and pay with cash, the merchant didn't accept because you have to pay with GoPay, but oh wait, I need to download the app first. I need to register, I need to put my money first. And then there's a queuing line, right? Today, when we go to the merchant, when we go to the SMEs, when we go to the store, there will be the same queuing line. It's no longer about adapting to the technology. It's the other way around. If the store didn't have the GoPay, or they didn't have the QR, or they didn't have the technology, they have to run, leaving out their stores to go to find the change for a cash change. Because everybody, the customers, is already using cashless. They have GoPay, they have Dana, they have OFO, they have everything in their wallet. But they don't have cash anymore. It's already in the mass majority right now. And right now, as Parmas Abdul says, we prefer electronic ride compared to Ojek Pangalan. So maybe previous, before Gojek, yeah, before technology, we still go to call a taxi in the middle of the streets and then call a Ojek Pangalan in the middle of the streets, right? This kind of experience, nowadays, we rarely see that. Even when I ask my friend or my colleague in the office, if they have, a, like, a, their home is a little bit far from the office, and then I, I ask you, how do you get here? Oh, I don't know what's the number of the bus, but I'm taking the bus, right? Before this era, before the online transportation is there, each one of us, must be remember, or if you want to go to Pasar Minggu, you have to ride this kind of transportations. And then you have to go to switching from this number to this number. And then you have to go to these intersections, and then you go to this kind of bus. There's a Metro Mini, there's a Kopaja, et cetera, et cetera, right? 
So the digital adaptions has changed our behavior entirely and has changed our mindset and our culture as well digitally. In the UK uh, and also in the US during the pandemic, everybody is trying to adapt to online can of interactions, right? And one of the interactions is the, what do you call it, uh, low justice system, right? Uh, they have like, this kind of hearing, a uh, justice hearings with the judge and also the attorneys that usually has to go offline. But because of the pandemic, they change it into a Zoom meeting to online sessions, right? And at that pandemic sessions, there is one particular attorney noticed that, oh, the suspect and the victim is sitting on different room as, as if they are sitting in a different room, but actually they are in the same house. And they notice there is an, uh, what do you call it, potential of the intim intimidations, right? at that house because it can be seen on the Zoom meeting. So she reported this to the police and apparently police came and arrest to the uh, predecessors or the, the, the pelaku that's happening there, right? So this kind of case has bring up more potential opportunities even for the justice system in America where now online hearings can be done and it's open more space for the justice systems and it's reduced physical and room intimidations if the victim and the suspect is within the same room. So it's transforming the justice system entirely. And then now we have this. Who's here is just recently or following up the Apple innovations, iPhones, right? So then you must know that uh, recently in the, new, in the latest Avon, they don't use the lightning cable anymore, right? They are using, they're changing the lightning cable into a USB-C, which is USB-C commonly known to be used for Androids. And this has sparked uh, the Apple fanboy or the netizens of the Apple or the fan base of the iPhone become outrageous because they didn't expect this to happen because they feel like lightning is best why we have to change to USB-C. Right, apparently Apple did this because in terms of data transfers, it can carry more data compared to the lightning. And in terms of charging to the phone, any type of phones is considered as fast charging, right? But more importantly, it is everywhere, right? You cannot avoid not to use USB-C because the environment is already there. Right, And all the facts that I have mentioned here is the innovations that comes not only from technology, not only from the products, not only from the brands, but also from the, what do you call it, justice system, society system, and it's all back to the customer experience. So welcome to 2024. This is the era of customer experience. So my name is Sultan Isnain Sah. Thank you uh, for introducing me earlier. So my line of work are tightly integrated into transforming user experience, business experience, customer experience, and also embracing the artificial intelligence and automations. So today I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to share the best practice of what industries and brands has done to change the customer experience and de deliver the best value for the business. Right, so these are the two facts that just recently came out from the survey. First one is coming from the global survey. The second one is coming uh, from the state of mobile that is specifically research about Indonesian's internet users. So the global research that's coming from Profile3 stated that Globally, the internet users has decreased their attention spans from previously 10 seconds to now 8 seconds. And the more younger the audience is, the attention spans can be reduced to 4 seconds or less. Right? 
So please keep that in mind. Eight seconds average attention spans of internet users. Right? Now let's look at the fact on the right. The state of mobile says that Indonesian people spending the longest duration for the day of being online on their phone, on social media, six hours. What does that mean? Did anybody guess what does that mean? That means we open our phone, we swipe, we swipe, we swipe, and then at the end of the day, we're sitting in our coach, and then we swipe, we swipe, we swipe, and then at the end of the day, it's six hours already. Right? So we don't pay attention to the content because we're already doing this. Oh, it's not interesting, swipe. Oh, it's not interesting, swipe. Oh, this is interesting, okay, I like it. That's it. That's how we consume our media contains today. This could be alarming, yes, but this could be also a business potential as well. Because today, and we enter digital media, we face the multi-screen reality in our life. Multi-screen reality is when we wake up, we check the notifications. And then we go to our office or we go to study, and then we sit down at our class or at the office, and then we open the laptop, right? And then when the break time is over, maybe we open again our phone, and then we watch YouTube or streamings, right? And then at the end of the day, when we go back home, we open again the TV, and then we tell what? What do we play? Netflix, Spotify, YouTube, right? Streamings. So it's multi-screen reality. And every step of the multi-screen, from phones to laptop to TV to any screens that we have, there's always advertising, 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 advertising. It's very, very exhausted that some of us has already have what we call it as ad blocker in our device. And we skip every ad that we've seen, right? Even my friends purchase YouTube Premium just for the sake of, I want to watch YouTube without watching any ads, right? And he purchased it like 15,000, 20,000 in a month, right? And with the current payment system, it's also easy, right? So Mark Zuckerberg says that the future of payment is if you can pay to the services as easy as you if you chat your friends. Right? And today, even in IM3, if you want to top up, you can top up using WhatsApp. You can top up using GoPay. You can top up using your any payment that you have on your mobile phones. It's very easy. It doesn't take you less than 30 minutes to complete that. So, with this kind of massive information in the media digitals, the Gen Z or the younger generations also feels that if I want to consume some media, I want to have a contextual experience or I want to have a brick period from my media digital or from my digital media. That's why when we go to some places, especially the, at Block M, Plaza or Black and Mall, if you guys go to Block and Mall, and then you see and evaluating all the stores, the most crowded place is not digital entertainment spot. It is the photo boot spot. It's very, very manual photo boot. You don't have digital print. You cannot post your photo into your Instagram or anything. You just print it out. Just go there having fun and print it out. There's no digital copy. So the Gen Z feels like when I need to break from social media or from digital media, I would like to take my, my space offline. So digital behavior is there, but there is a need to connect with people, with environments offline as well. All right? So this is the reason why we also have to understand the behavior of the current market potential, which are the Gen Zs or the Youngers. Because the young generations that we have today is no longer millennials. 
is the Gen Z, right? I'm the millennials. <laughs> I'm 30 right now, <laughs> right? Some of my friends in the millennials are already 40, so we are no longer young, <laughs> right? So the millennials, they open WhatsApp, yes. They read article online, yes. But see this, they still read physical book. So online is there as the normal behavior, but physical still required. And then video format, yes, that's why TikTok is trending. So when they go search related to the hotels, related to the uh, where's the cafe that is trending today, they're not doing Googling like the millennials. Millennials and above maybe do a Googling. But the Gen Z, they're looking it in where? TikTok, exactly. And then in the TikTok, they swipe, they swipe, they swipe, and then they're looking for a review, a recommendation. So that's why the behavior of consuming things by the Gen Z, it depends on how many reviews or how many recommendations that it gets. They will compare what is the review in TikTok, what is the review in the YouTube, and then what is the review in the Google map. And then they will decide, okay, I want to go to that place. I want to hang out to that place. I want to buy this item. Without reviews, without recommendations, they will doubt that this is a high quality product or high quality services, right? The Gen Z also didn't listen to traditional TV. They didn't also listen to the radio. What do they listen? Podcasts. Yeah. And unlike radio, when you're listening to the podcast, you don't have ownership. Why I'm saying this? Because when you listen to the radio, right, you have the like, what do you call it? The invincible relationship between you and the radio host. So that's why when you go to uh, Central Java or Eastern Java, and then you listen to the radio, and then the host says that, uh, oh, at the kilometer 27, there is a crash or there is somebody that nails up in the tire, the millennials who listen to that radio usually go to that place and help that man because he listened to the radios. So there is a relationship between the community and the announcer. But podcast didn't have that. Why? Because podcast is not real time. It's pre-recorded and it's one way, not two way interactions. So these are the behaviors. And the most interesting part is that what are the most trending things that are currently popular from the Gen Z? Mental health and healing. And when they decided to go to healing, if you see here, 84% choose, I want to disconnect from my digital media reality. Just go to some quiet place, beautiful environments, and just be there. So that's why you don't see any Gen Z goes to Ubud or Bali and then post something. Only millennials does that. <laughs> okay, so they, they, don't, they don't like uh, uh, showing off that I'm doing these healings, right? Because when they do healings, they go to a quiet place, they literally meant to do that. So this trans dance encourage the practitioners and also the, the, the media in the industry to realize that, oh, the trends of marketing, the trends of the industry is now has shifted. So maybe you have been aware that there is a marketing 1.0, marketing 2.0, and marketing 3.0, right? So marketing 0.0 is product base, 2.0 is customer base, 3.0 is sustainability base, and then digital marketing, and then AI driven. Today, you are 6.0 already. 6.0 is means immersive marketing. So based on the trend that I have explained earlier, the marketing or the businessness today is to transform online activity to be integrated with offline experience and offline activity to be integrated with online experience. So offline in online and online in offline. So that's why because there are two touch points that's integrated to, teach, to, to each other. That's why seamless, multi-sensory, and also frictionless experience is very important. Right? You don't want to go to, to scan one QR code, and then 
when it, you, you hit the QR code, it says error. Or it takes you a long time to load. Right? You will leave that kind of touch point. Right? You don't want to complete any kind of transactions of any interest on that. So to bridge these needs, there is a new term called digital, which are the combination of physical and digital experience to provide you the contextual experience. And digital is actually already here, and all of us is already experienced it, maybe, and some of us already aware of it. One of it is the one that just being uh, exposed recently, super payments, where the shopping experience goes to social media, goes to e-commerce, but you are watching the host of the live shopping is not doing the shop, uh, not selling at all. They're doing it with entertainment. Some people doing it with playing the music on the behind where they're selling. Some people doing it with humor and jokes and interacting in during the live shopping, right? Some people doing it with extra promo only today, flash sell, hot promo, right? So it's become more entertaining and more engaging for the people to buy and purchase the product in that platform without them having to go to another platform or another channel. And maybe you already noticed that in Indonesia, some stores is already put in the QR as the purchase payment, right? Or the purchase touch points. But actually in the US, there is one store called Rosity Goods. They notice that whenever people go to the store, people only look at the window, doing what they call as window shopping. So why not make the window shopping is actually a shopping? So they put the QR into the window and put a discount over it. So people come to the window and scan the QR and purchase right away. And the second, if you go to, there is one supermarket called m and also in the US, they put it the AR, the, the what do you call it, augmented reality store map. Because the store is so huge that people often get lost. So we experience that here as well, right? When we go to IKEA or we go to a huge supermarket or convenience stores, right? So these convenience stores, they provide, if you scan this QR, then you see the map, and then you can also, uh, what do you call it, scan the augmented reality so you know the price already. So the experience is in store, but you scan something and then you interact digitally with the brand or with the stores. This is also already being adapted in Indonesia when we are doing, uh, what do you call it, the gasolines or the benzene reloads with My Pertamina, where you can pay using the QR or using the My Pertamina applications. To take it more extremes, in the US, you probably have already noticed there is a store called Amazon Go, developed by Amazon, where every customer details is already integrated to the Amazon's website. And then when you go, you don't have to bring your phone. And then when you take something, you don't, have to, you don't need to pay. You just bring it outside of the store and your money will be automatically deducted. Because it has uh, scans in your phones, it's already, the ID is already integrated. So that's why they call it Amazon Go. You can take it and then you can go, right? Samsung. So you probably noticed that if we are talking about customer experience or user experience, the best CX, the top brand that comes out to your mind is probably Apple or Tesla or any kind of innovative product or brands, right? But turns out Forbes just released that the top best customer experience is not coming from all that brands. It's come from Samsung. Because in 20, 20, uh, 2023, Samsung just released a new product called Samsung Bespoke. It's not a smartphone. It's a refrigerator. Why is this becoming the best customer experience? Because Samsung knows that every mom or every wife that buying the refrigerators, they often be boring, right? Today you purchase a black refrigerators, right? 
and then some time of the, at some point of the time you feel bored and then you replace your refrigerators with the yellow one right with bespoke you can only purchase one refrigerators but you can customize your design from your phone you can change the color you can type you can add your uh, preferable motif you can have your own illustrator to this and you can connect this with your social media and spend your time with your family and you see that you can do a fast time with the screen of refrigerators so this is what what Forbes called as a personalized customer experience so in relate to my company where why I work for Indosat is actually a 56 years old company right so it's very very legacy company it's very old company we are the first or maybe one of the big companies that are contributed to the launch of satellite palapa anybody still remember satellite palapa right so it's 50 years ago right satellite Bumi, the Earth satellite of the Palapa, is still there in some of the Indosat site, right? But it's no longer there. So how do we adapt with those kind of changes? So we have to learn, and we have to adapt. And the way the way we adapt is, we listen to our customers, and we utilize the technique what we call it as social listening. And when you go to social media and you look up for the Indosat, the first thing that you see is either network quality comments or Indosat maling pulsa. Indosat is taking the money from my balance, right? So it's very, very outrageous. Indosat is spamming. Why are you sending me this kind of notifications at the middle of the night? I don't want it. Block, right? That's Indonesian netizens, by the way. <laughs> so we deep dive to this social listening insights. And then we did what we called as root cause identifications. And we noticed that, oh, turns out the SMS or notification that we send to our customers is actually comes from one sender in the SAT. So whenever you are running low on your quota or yearning low on balance we send you the same notifications with the same senders that's why people keep uh, what we call percepting that oh another sms from indosat another sms from indosat very spammy right so we did what we call as contextualizations by dividing the important information package related general information in the promo so the customer can right away get the context. What is this notification is all about? Oh, it's promo. Okay, I want to purchase. I don't want to purchase. It's my decisions. Oh, this is related to package reminder. My package is about to expire. Then I have to renew. I have to do a reload or something. So they can get more contextual information on their phone. We also looking at Indosat or IM3 right now, not only as a telco company, we are looking at the company as a data company because we have the internet usage data, we have the location data, we have also the behavior of the customer data. So we send contextual notifications. If the users is having to go to Muslim applications every month, most likely in the Ramadan camp, they would like to get notifications related to the Ramadan's activity. So that's why last year we sent contextual notifications at 4 a.m. in the morning, reminding them to do a salat, and also if you want to do sedekah subuh or a down charity, you can do it with our solutions. And we also send them the notifications based on their locations based on their regions. If you are in Bali, you will get notifications related to your locations in Bali. If you are in Sumatra, you will get relevant offers related to your locations or your regions. So this way, the customers can get information or offers that are highly relevant and relatable 
to them. And if there is a customers who don't want to get any kind of notifications, we also give them a way out. We call it a do not disturb. So you can go to the menus in our USSD, or you can go to our mobile app and then subscribe to any notifications or any content that you don't want to see. And every overs that we send to our customers, now we put priority on the customer consents. It will be an active consent if you want these overs, yes or no. So we change the way we communicate to the customers and it brings up a lot of change in terms of our customer satisfaction as well. What about the digital trend? Is IM3 also adapting to that trend? The answer is yes. So I would like to share to you that at 2023, we are collaborating with the Pesta Pora Musical event. And at that event, we have to gain the attention of the audience of the Pesta Pora, right? We don't want to be there just as a main sponsor, but we, don't, but we want to be there as a unique experiential brand. So when the customers go there, the first thing they see that, oh, this musical concert theme is related to the fruit. And the first booth that I would like to see is the backets of the fruits. So we collaborated with the local artists to design the backets of fruits as a booth of the IM3. And it's located in the center, so it will be visible from any point angle of the photo shoots from the, any media or any angle of the customers who want to do a photo shoot, right? And not only that, usually brands goes to concerts or goes to event, they only do what? Sales, right? They only do sales, they want to do uh, these offers to the customers, right? We do that as well, but we also give them a free juice. So giving a free juice, it means you go to concerts, you feel heated, right? You feel heated and then you feel thirsty, right? And then you feel it's very hard to find a drink or a spot to rest. So we provided them what they need, right? And in terms of physical and digital reality, we also combine it with our QR scan when if the customers goes to our booth, they can scan and interact with our artificial intelligence. So this is the video that you might want to study. Is that the style of audio? So you see that the customers goes, they scan, and it goes directly into the artificial intelligence, right? The artificial intelligence persona that we have, we call it as Indira or Indosat Digital Representative. So it goes directly uh, engage with our customers. So they not only go there for the concerts, not go there for the products, not go there for the rest. It also goes for the interactions with our digital touch point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So since the early of our merger, <laughs> double sounds. Okay. Thank you. So the early of our mergers at the 2022, Indosat are now being married, quote unquote to a two brand. So usually you notice that Indosat is IM3, but now we combine it with three Indonesia or three ID, which previously come from three Hutchinsons, right? So that's why the company's name is now become Indosat Uridu Hutchinsons because it's already merged. So together with three ID, we launch uh, the solutions from offline to online and from online to offline. If you go to any transportation spot or any uh, tourism destinations, you will see there is a 3DG box or what do you call it, the smart uh, machines 
that you can do purchase SIM card. You can go there and then you interact like ATM. It's similarly like ATM, but you what you do here is you want to change your SIM cards. If your SIM card is lost, if your SIM card is broken, you can ju just do go to the machines and then the card will be sent directly to your home. Right? Without having to go to any store, without having to bring uh, any hassle documents to the stores, right? Sometimes when you go to the stores, bring the hassle documents, sometimes there's a long queuing, right? Sometimes you don't feel like um, it's, I have to go to store, yeah? Very lazy, yeah? <laughs> it's really like that, right? But in here, you can find it anywhere near your, near your house, right? And in the IM3, we're also launching what we call it as a Garai Online. If you don't want to go to any online place at all, you can go to Garai Online, and then you can purchase the same thing. You can do a SIM card registration, you can do a broken SIM card, et cetera, et cetera, online into our website, and then the card will be sending to your home directly. And the payment, everything is done digital. So what about the trend on the metaverse and also generative AI? We're also adapting to that. So if you go to our mobile app in the MIME tree, we are now having what we call it as a MIME tree world, which is the inside game of our mobile apps that you can experience together with your friends. And our current Indira, the Indosa Digital Representatives, will also be empowered with the generative AI. Because today, you probably noticed that we are already in that stage of, it is common to use ChatGPT, even for a school task, right? It is also very common to use like uh, mid-journey, the visual kind of generative AI that can, when you put one prompt, and then you go getting a beautiful image or beautiful designs that you are required, right? So even Arba'in Rambe, one of the legendary photographers in Indonesia are about to have AI photo competitions without any camera at all. What he's doing, he's competing the AI prompters to make beautiful photo using AI technology. So there is no photo, there is no model, there is no equipment at all. Pure prompting, pure texting. So now the behavior is already going there, so we have to adapt and we have to learn step by step to get there. So these are the business impact. So for the first nine months of 2023, all the business metrics is already went up beautifully from revenue, customer satisfactions, until EBITDA and also the margin. And I cannot share you the latest full year results, yes, because it's still finalized by our finance, but it will be positively impact as well, and it will be uh, released by end of February. So, takeaways. 2024 is the era of immersive, so it's about time that we have to adapt and embrace the changes. And one way to embrace the changes is to listen to the customer feedback, right? We don't know what we don't know unless we listen to the other people who experience it on the ground. And then the third one is spamming, putting broadcasting message to everyone, everybody without context is yesterday's games. This is 2024. People want more contextual experience and contextual messaging. So always put a user consent, make it personalized, make it contextual. And at the end of the day, keep your business goals. So that's all from me today. So we will be a Q&A session, I believe. So I would like to close these presentations by, I believe there is a video, right? So Indosat with the, our strategic partnerships has just recently launched what we called as the marvelous experience centers, because we believe today's market required the experience, uh, what do you call the experience uh, journey, 
So you want to experience it in offline, you want to experience it in online as well. So how do we bring that to the customers? So with this presentation, I would like to show you our Indosat Marvelous experience. So again. Yes, so with this experience centers, you will see how Indosat, as a 50 years old company, is together with the partners and stakeholders to collaborate and innovating how to bring a useful experience with the latest technology adaptions in the market. That's all from me. Okay, thank you, Vessel Dang. Um, it's really impressive that we ha really have to see, we have to adapt and w see the behavior changes, uh, especially in this evolving digitalized world, right? And okay, let's move on to the Q&A sessions. Uh, maybe the offline participants, do you have any questions you would like to ask? Because... Uh, if no, or maybe we can move to... Or maybe you have a question. <laughs> well, I do have a question, <laughs> but I would... They're Wait. too excited to play the videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I do have one question. Uh, maybe I will uh, trigger a question first before we move to the online. Um, well... Uh, as I said before, that uh, you mentioned that we have to adapt and see behavior uh, in the evolving, evolving. Sorry, what do you call again? Uh, digital commerce and everything. Uh, so, from the maybe customers' point of view, how do we use digital innovations to keep up with the technology technology trends um, and make sure that uh, this experiences can be accessible to everyone so the first thing that you would like to study when you want to innovate something in the digital touch points and you want to bring a relevant experience to your customers or to your business is that you have to ask your customer first what do they need do they need qr as a payment do they need uh, what do you call it virtual reality or augmented reality because the trap of being the innovators in the digital era is that you want to bring the latest technology. But at the end of the day, it's not all of that is the answers. Because you see that uh, the, the, the first priority that we fix is not to put the AI, it's not to put the virtual reality, but to fix the SMS. That's the hygiene factors uh, that we fix first in terms of customer experience. And uh, we won't be using QR or e-wallet as a payment if there is no COVID pandemic, right? So at that time, uh, Central Bank or the Bank of Indonesia released the national QR, right? After the pandemic is happening. Before that, the Gojek, the OVO, all the e-wallets all have their own different QR, right? And when it's not centralized and there is no government's 
policy to it, people will tend to doubt the solutions because it's coming from the private sectors and it's not everyone is doing it, right? The environment is not there yet. Why have to switch from cash to a cashless, right? Even though at that time we already see that the cashless society has been saved up using what we call e-money, right? The card, previously we used the card to payments, right? The flash, I remember the BCI is releasing the flash card and it's trending, right? But we are not doing it entirely to a mobile phone at that time. Until COVID came out, until central banks released the QR as a generic payment, a digital payment. So then comes the adoption rate, right? So if we see the most low of innovations, there is, there is certain society or segregations of segmentations that calls early adopters and then it slowly goes up to mass majority. So if you want to adapt a technology, you see that where is this technology stage right now? Is it still in the early adapters or is it already massively used by the mass majority? So if it's already used by mass majority, yes, you can adapt that kind of technology. But if it's still early adapter, then you have to think what is actually our customer's need? Do they really need the technology or do they need the solutions? Because solution is not always came from technology. So that's my answer. Okay, so it's really hard to, you know, uh, to fulfill the needs of there's a customer satisfactory, right? Mm, so maybe in your experiences that uh, maybe you can share what you've, okay, the most, maybe the hardships that you've been through when you try to uh, find out this kind of uh, what uh, to fulfill the needs of those ca customers. Maybe you can share a little bit of that. <laughs> sure, thank you, Putri. So yes, uh, we do have some challenges to bring technology to the customers or to the people as well. Uh, one of it, if you see our uh, artificial intelligence persona, the Indira, is still based on 2D characters, right? Our vision is to bring this persona into uh, what we call the three-dimensional uh, visualizations or maybe in a holographic visualizations, right? You go to the store and then you meet the Indira in person, right? But that dream doesn't come out really well if you do it right now because you have to see the adoption rates in that day. Right? If the adoption rate is not there, people might be afraid to use that technology. So those hardship will be determining what is actually the customer's needs versus your self-ego that, oh, this is new technology, we have to adapt it, right? So uh, you have to, to, to balance between your current adoption rate to the technology with your customer's adoption rate to the technology. I would like to share you uh, one big story about uh, a robot. So. In the UK, uh, sorry, in the United States, the Google team have once sitting out together and uh, doing a quick research that if I go to a restaurant, what does it look like if I'm being served with a robot instead of a waitress, right? And then they did quick research. Uh, it's called scrum planning or sprint planning. And then they did all of that, and then they came up with a one concept called robot Savioki. Savioki, Savioki robot is the surf, uh, like a waitress robot that goes to, to your table uh, without you having to bring any plates or glasses to, to your customers or to your uh, consumers. So at that time, that idea came like 10 to 15 years ago. At that time, nobody cares about that because the timing is not there yet. The adoption rate is not there yet. The people already know that a robot is a fictional character, but they don't fully understand that, oh, the actual robot can do this kind of stuff, right? So they still feel afraid if the robot comes to them, is it self-sustained robot or is there somebody else controlling it somewhere? What if I put my wallet there and then you go whoosh? gone by the wind, right? So they don't put trust in it. 
But by 2015, I believe, the Safioki robot dance being fully utilized by one of the hotels in Singapore. So now, in Indonesia, you probably already seen that in Bandung and in Jakarta, there is some restaurants that already utilize the robot Safiokis. So it takes more than 10 to 15 years of adaption rates, but the trend is there, so you have to keep focusing on the innovations and keep following up to the trend. Yes. Okay, thank you. And a question, a question. From, for, from the offline participants. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very uh, fascinating uh, talk. Uh, thank you. Um, two questions. One is, uh, you mentioned that podcasts are one way and it's not in real time. And but you also say it's it's very popular. Right? Well, why is it popular? Because you know, for, from my point of view, uh, it's like radio. Uh, and and uh, why is it in this format that it is popular? That's one question. Um, the other one is I'm hardly a Gen Z. I'm certainly hardly a millennial even. Uh, I am, of course, you know, in the in the baby boomer stage, right? Um, and I, not like everybody else here, I have difficulty in s swiping and things of that sort. Do, do you consciously market to the baby boomers as well, or do you wait for us to die off? <laughs> Thank you, Pak. So, uh, pa siapa? Sorry? Paderi, okay. Thank you, Paderi. Very uh, good question as well. So, I would like to answer the second questions first. Uh, do we target the baby boomers or <laughs> are we waiting for you to not continue using the products? Yes, we do still targeting uh, boomers or people older uh, because, like I said also, Indosat is a 15 years company, right? Not most, but maybe 10 to 20 percent of our loyal customers is coming at your age range. But people who use the number from the first time they bought the numbers and then they don't change the number at all until today, right? So because they're very much in love with the numbers. So those what we call as the loyal customers. So uh, we do market with them and we also seen that there is a uh, Behavior shift as well in this age of group. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen this also in my late uh, uh, father-in-law. It's uh, my wife's father's. He also adapted digital, but not unlike millennials and it's unlike the Generation Zs. We may be watching YouTube, but the older generations listening YouTube. Berita hari ini, right? Terjadi kebakaran, etc., etc. So they play that news and then they listen to it. They don't watch the content, right? Some of the other uh, age groups also play YouTube, but to listen to the Muratal or the Al Quran sounds, right? Because it's calming them. It's 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 benefits them with their spiritual guidance, and so on and so forth. So the digital be behavior is there as well, but it's quite different from the millennials and the Gen Z. So yes, we do target that kind of group, but we have different approach for them, obviously. And these age groups, some of them is already adapting to Facebook as well, because they need to reunite, uh, uh, reunite with their school friends, with their college friends, with their older friends, alumni, so and so forth. So there's, there's there. So the first question is related to, can you remind me again? Podcast, okay. So podcast is a one way. Why do the youngsters or the Gen Z are interested to it compared to the radio? Right. So the era of a radio, we don't favorite the content on the radio, right, Pak? We favorite the stations, right? Oh, I like to listen to Mustang. 
Oh, I'd like to listen to RRI. I'd like to listen to uh, Pram Wars, right? That is highly relatable to the certain age of group. But podcast is more niche. You can choose not to follow the stations, but you can choose to follow the exact particular contents. Oh, I would like to filter my content related to business insight. I would like to take it to Daily Call Bazaar podcast. I would like to take it from Raditya Dika's podcast. I would like to take it from uh, Pagita Wirawan's podcast, and so on and so forth. So I can personalize my contents from multiple channels and media stations. So is that answer your questions, but Yes. Thank you, Pak. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any questions that anyone to ask? Or, um, okay. Well, due to the limited time as well, maybe one last question for me to close the uh, close the uh, Q and A session. Okay. So. As it may aim to inspire the students, the faculty, and all the public audiences at IPMI during today's event, uh, maybe you could give your suggestions and or motivations. Like, do you have uh, for emphasizing the Indonesian business environment in the digital era? Please. Okay. So, like a tips, right? Yeah, some kind Asset of tips. tips. Yes. So it's actually highlighting in the top five key takeaways, right? So the first of all is that if you want to adapt to a digital, find your target audience first. Where is where do they sitting? In which age group? Because different age group can have different uh, media behavior, right? And then understand how they react to digital media and understand how they release the digital media into our offline touch points. Because today we are not only talking about digital media only, but it has to be integrated between digital, online, and also the offline touch points, right? Uh, some people might have, or some age group might have a trouble when they realize that the offline touch points are now related to the digital or online touch points, right? So we need to segregate uh, that kind of age group as well and provide a relevant experience for them. One of the examples that I can share is that you probably don't know this, but Gojek has a different mobile app for a disability users. So if you have uh, disabilities or di different abilities, whether you are the driver or whether you are the customers, you have to download a separate Gojek app that is designed specifically for your disabilities. So the, the, the benefit of being digital is that you can customize the technology, you can customize the media into a personalized experience. So what kind of personalized experience do you want to explore and what are the actual customers' needs that you see on the ground is actually the major things that you need to, to study first before you do any kind of innovations. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Pa Sultan and everyone. Uh, I would like to close the session or talk for today, but before that, let me give you a summary. So, correct me if I'm wrong. So digital adaptions have changed our behavior, mindset, and culture virtually, especially the post-pandemic behavior changes that force us to reduce the physical in interactions. And as we enter the customer experience era of 2024, prioritizing contextual experiences is crucial. And digital or physical digital is as the bridge of contextual experience. And it's also important to recognize and addressing the needs of Gen Z as the future market is now centered to Gen Z. And the coexistence of online and physical demands created unified and interactive environments for everyone. But it also presents both challenges and opportunities. So it depends on how we perceive and wisely use the technology. Is that all right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. All perfectly good. 
All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everyone, we've reached the end of our Power Talk with Sultan Isnaisha. And a big thank you to Baba Sultan Isnaisha for his insights and to all of you for joining us. Now I will give, you, give back the floor to our MC Mbak Suci. Please applause, everyone. Thank you very much for this insightful discussion. My apology, but due to limited time, we have to close this discussion. However, if you are curious about IPMI International Business School, please visit our website at ipmi.ac.id. And if you'd like to watch our previous Power Talk, even in YouTube, at IPMI campus. And now we're excited to express our gratitude to our esteemed keynote speaker with the token of appreciation. I would like to invite Bapak Deri Habir to give token of appreciation to Bapak Sultan Isnain Shah. Okay, once again, please applause for Bapak Sultan Isnain Shah. Okay, so before we end the power talk, let us have a moment for a photo session with all the participants with the keynote speaker. Yeah, and for the online participant, please open your camera because we're going to screenshot the, uh, the screens that we have here. Everyone for offline participants can gather in the middle here. Yeah, hide up here see me. Okay, once again, to online participants, please open your camera because we will we will take a screenshot to take a photo together. Maybe the people in the back, uh, you can kind of go to the front. <laughs> Is it showing? Please wait. Okay. Everyone, uh, everyone in the back, can you like maybe go to the front side, please? Or maybe uh, some of you, uh, some of the people in the front, kind of you know, crouch down. Crouch down. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, everyone. Uh, <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Once again. Okay. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we finally come to the end of the Power Talk. Thank you very much for your participation in this program. We hope you found this event informative and useful. Thank you for participating. We hope to see you at our next IPMI program. Stay safe and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.